Hello YouTubers, today we're talking shop tops. Now we have a shop top here off of Fujo. This is basically how it comes. And what most people don't realise, on the top of the shop top there's like a little ball bearing mechanism. And what it basically allows you to do is actually turn the steering wheel, it just makes it easier to turn the steering wheel, just gives you a little bit more, uh, well, easier really. Now, the way to know these are done, is when you turn the turn the steering wheel when the car is kind of like say you're parking so you hear this clunk 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 and it kind of sounds bad now that's when you know shop top's gone but also what happens is that same noise happens when you break a spring so you have to make sure you have to look at the car to make sure it's not the spring that's broken it is the shop top uh, more or less same way of changing both of them but you need to obviously know what part to get basically unfortunately as well the shop top is a nightmare to uh, fit. This is obviously the top of the shock and inside under there is the shock top. Now we have to take the whole spring and everything out, compress the spring to fit the new shock top. So yeah, bit of a nightmare. So we better crack on with it. Now as you can see I've got the wheel off and basically Underneath there in the spring, you're not going to be able to see right at the top of the spring is a shop top. Now there's a couple of different ways of taking this off. Both of them kind of have their own drawbacks. Um, we have to, on this particular car, either take this bolt off to take the spring, or the actual shock, out of the hub. Or take the bottom wishbone off, which is obviously here. Where are my fingers? You can't, well you can just see the top of the wishbone there. And, but if you take the wishbone off, if you take the bottom wishbone off, which is here, the problem is you have to disconnect the, the steering arm, you have to disconnect the brakes, you have to disconnect a lot more stuff. Where if you just take off the bolt from the actual shock, you only have to disconnect the drop link. But you have to basically wedge the, um, the whole hub and everything down. They both are a nightmare on this particular car. Some cars just have two bolts that go through the shocks, it flips off, they're easy. These aren't. So, what I think I'm going to do on this particular one is I'm going to go for taking this bolt off here, the top of the shock, where my hand is. You just see the edge of it there. There we go, just see the edge of it there, my finger is. That's the one I'm going to go for and uh, yeah hope for the best really and take the drop link off and uh, see how it goes so turn the wheel towards me no nope, turn it the other way and i need to try and take off this bolt looks like a 14 or 15 but before i'm going to do that i'm going to get the wire brush on it I'm going to clean it, put a bit of lube on it, leave it for a few minutes and then come back to it. socket I've got the air gun so let's hope this comes off been in the whole thing now fortunately the square bolt behind that should have stayed in place hasn't so the whole thing is now spinning Turn it by hand and try and line that back up and try again. Hi. Right. Now in. Hope this works. This time. Yeah. 
Try and keep it in with a hammer wedge it. Yeah, that worked. This is good. Saves a lot of hassle. And as you can see, that's the square I was telling you about. So it's a good sign. Now I need to take off the drop link, which again is a lot harder than it sounds. There's only one bolt, which you can't maybe quite see, but there's only one bolt and my finger is there. Not a big deal, but they mainly are. It can be a pig to be honest. 19 mil. Oh, 17, sorry. This might come off with the air gun, I just don't think it will. Just as I thought, the whole fucking thing is spinning. It's a nightmare to get drop links off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pin nose vice grips. Get it in behind the ball joint. There is a little bit of metal there. Try and grab it without doing any damage. Um, and uh, then take it off. That's the plan. But how it's going to work out is another thing. What I'll do is I'll turn the camera on once I got this off. Because this could take a while. Now YouTubers, I got it off. Now, before someone comments and say, well, there is a hole in the middle of drop links where you can put either an Allen key in or a star head and twist it. Yes, there is. But that one was completely rusty. And if I'd have put it in, it just would have rounded. So it wouldn't have worked. Um, they're just a nightmare to get on and off. Anyway. Now I'm literally ready to be able to just hit this down. Now this is going to come down a bit quite easy. Then it's going to, we're going to struggle, but I still think it's the easiest way at the minute. I haven't disconnected anything from the top or loosened any of the bolts because of this. If I loosen the bolts on top, as I'm trying to hit this down, it's not going to do any good. So let's see if it moves. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but obviously it's moving. We need to do a long way. I kind of stopped. And we're about, well actually to be fair, it's not actually too bad, I was expecting it to be a little bit more. Now it's just a case of hitting it again. And as I'm hitting it, I'm pushing it out this way. Now, we're out. Um, this obviously, this is one way of doing it. Now, this is the harder way to put it back, but it's, I don't have to take off as much stuff. So, it's just... Now, if this didn't come down easy, I would have to take off the whole hub, but it's kind of come down quite easy, so it's not too bad. Now I've just got to hopefully take that out of there. This one's being a bit awkward. Normally when you get this far, it's a lot easier to take them out, normally. Oh, I had it there. Slightly smaller even bar. Get it in a bit better. This is being now. Now this will Yeah, you know what? Now, I can loosen the three bolts on the top, which is basically, this is obviously the shock top, and as you can see, there's one, two, three, I think they're 13 mils. There's little locators stood here, so I'm gonna remove them next. Actually, you might be able to see it on camera. If I lift the camera up, hopefully you can see that now. So one, two, three, and leave the big bolt in the middle, but then three bolts on the outside. So I'm going to take them off now, turn the camera back down and put this bastard on. Now as you can see, I've got the whole shock and spring and everything off. And as you can basically see, you shouldn't be able to see that, this shock top has basically exploded. Basically you could say, you can just see all the bearings and stuff and that's why it's clunking. So what we need to do now is, we need to compress this spring and uh, take the shock top up and replace it. 
Now this is where you have to be careful. Because I have an air powered spring compressor. You can get um, different ones that kind of just hook onto the spring and you can crank them with a, a ratchet or an air ratchet. Now all types of spring compressors are dangerous. So you have to be careful. You can be compressing the spring and it could just snap. It's not good. So basically I just happen to have an air powered one. So what I need to do is I need to set it inside here and basically just get it set up first. Now this actually isn't the easiest one to do. No matter what I do, it's getting caught. Um, I'm running out of clamping press now. Hold on. Move over there. Turn it a bit. Now, see, I really need to get it on this one. But. I can't twist anymore. It looks like we're in trouble here, because that's not going to work. Too. It's not safe. Now as you can see, we're now loose. Now I don't like the way I've got this. If you was changing the spring, you couldn't change the spring in the way I've got this set up. I'm, I'm holding the bottom shot, which isn't great, but it's the only way I can seem to get this done with this machine. The only advantage is on these here, there's little lips, and I'm, I'm catching a lip on here. So it's not going to spring out of me, but I still personally don't like it. Because I'm only changing the shock top, I can get away with doing it this way, but I don't like it. 21 mil on the top, And air gun. And it comes off. So we can now, hopefully, say, yep, take that off. We get new washers, so, but obviously, as you can see, just completely and utterly destroyed. That's what remains of the, the roller bearing. Half it's gone. And this is basically our plate where our new bearing basically has to actually believe it or not the old ring is still caught in there so I'm gonna to have to get that out <laughs> as you can see that was actually caught in there so now that's out this new one will slot in on top as we can see it's slotted in but not only that look it actually moves I hope this is coming across okay it moves which is what we want so no more banging now we are doing both sides so it's always best like I say to do both sides especially when it comes to things like this now what you need to make sure is obviously the spring has kind of one end and that has to locate where we're looking that has to locate here you can see there's like a step and that spring end has to locate on that step. That's important. Yeah. 
So there we get everything new. So we can take out this washer. And obviously replace with our new one. Okay. Put a new shock top down. Lovely. Now this will move, so this doesn't really matter what position you get in. The most important thing is, is to get that there. New washer and new bolt. Now, this work comes a little bit tricky. We might get away with it, but I don't think we will. So we'll try and screw this down here, yeah, don't put don't hold too much hope to it. As we can see, the whole shock is just moving. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. And what I'm going to basically do is... Now again, I might get a few comments, but believe me, it works. You have a rubber bung here, which basically stops the spring going all the way down. Now, you can grab the actual shot part with vice grips, but, and there is a big but, you have to grab the top. If you grab the bottom, when the spring compresses, it's just going to burst the springs and you're going to need a new shot. You grab the top, which is hidden by the bung, it cannot go down to the actual seals and destroy your spring. So, I'm grabbing the top. Need to get a good, good grab now. As high as you can possibly go. Now. Lovely. Now, push all that back up. Now, sorted. Now, what I have to be careful of is to make sure when I release this, that this spring, because obviously the spring's at an angle, there's only way I could do it, goes back into this little thing here. You have to be careful, you have to be careful the fingers slow to release this. And as you can see, I've missed. No worries. Let's try and get it again. Now we're free. This is going to be a bit of a nightmare because it's all on the piss. This is not great. It's definitely better, it's closer. I should be able to hit that with the hammer. Now, like I said, I wouldn't advise doing it that way. That was the worst one I've ever done. If you're replacing the spring, you can't do it that way. Uh, but we've done it, we're still here, but uh, don't do it that way. Sorted. Now, as we can see, you cannot see the little ball bearings. It's nice and straight. The other one wasn't, so we're sorted. Now, I don't know about you, but there's two things we can take from now. One, we obviously, we, we got the part right first time, which I don't know about you, it's a good feeling. I like looking at something and saying, yeah, it's that, and it turns out to be that. It's just, I think it's good anyway. Maybe I'm just a bit weird, but anyway. Um, and obviously, you know, it's all back in. So we are, we, we're good to go. And it's just basically now a reversal, but to get it into the hub could be a nightmare. Now this is where the real fun begins. All I've done is I very loosely just put the bolts at the top just to kind of hold this in place. I've got to now try and bend this down, lift this up at the same time and slide it in. Um, and obviously this time, this is a lot tighter than before because obviously uh, there's a new um, shop top in it. So this uh, is going to be difficult.
The one thing I do have is my big blue tool, which you've seen me use before for taking off ball joints. So, see if we can wedge this in somewhere. And that will allow me to pull down on it, as you can see, and then try somehow. This, this, this is just not going to work. Um, it's just not going to work. So yes, YouTubers, I had to give in. I took off the bottom wishbone bolt, for, um, 16 mil bolt just came straight out. I've got a lot more room now. As you can see, the, the boots come out, the actual gearbox, but that doesn't matter. We'll put that back on, but at least now I've got a lot more room. Should do in the first place, but uh, anyway, I didn't. Go ahead and didn't. Now, as you can see, look more or less straight away, it's gone on. It's down. Look how quick that was. I could have saved myself a lot of time. I was just being stubborn. Put the bolt back. One, one. Just finger tight. Just so it's in there. Obviously now, what I want to do is to go back in so we can stick the actual wishbone back on. Ah, you fucker! I'll put the three bolts on the top first because it's just been a fucking nightmare. You ever had just one of them days where you just want to go home? Yeah, I'm having one of them now. So, put the bottom wishbone on. As I do that, I'm going to lift up at the same time. Put the up back in. Yeah. Right. Fuck her! Now, what's that? Basically. I've got to tighten everything now, obviously. Three bolts on the top, the bottom ball joint. Uh, I've got to tighten the, the bolt that holds the shock on, and obviously the drop link. And uh, put a new clip around the CV boot. So, yeah, let's get tightening. 60 mil spanner and socket. Very careful using an air gun. I'm not tightening these bolts fully because I'll snap them. So I'm gonna have to tighten everything by hand. It just gives me a good place to start with the air gun. So the bolts for the shock as well. Sign up that, 16 mil. Just air gun in. Make sure it's down all the way. So, now, that's in all the way now. But now I can try it. We're getting there. We are getting there. That was the old one. Don't need that. Tighten that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten the drop link. I'm going to tighten everything by hand. 
then I'll turn the camera back on and then we'll do the top. Now as you can see I've got it down on the floor, I've just put the wheel on and obviously tightened everything by hand. Best way to do it. Now, there's three 13mm bolts up here and again you can see they're not tight so what I'm going to do is tighten these again by hand. What I mean by hand is rather than the air gun. I squeezed them with the air gun but I didn't fully tighten them. Now, that's all good. All nicely evenly tightened. Yep. Bang that back on. And look, one shock top done. Now, see if you can do it without swearing as much as me. Uh, just one of them days, I want to go home. So yeah, it's easy as that, look. Um, this is on a Peugeot 206 by the way, 01 Peugeot 206. Um, I tried to do it, the, the way I did it first, the reason why I did that is because, especially on the older cars, the more bolts you take off, the chances of more things snapping and having to replace more and the price goes up and up and up for the customer. So I just try and do it that way, but I should have just listened to myself and just did it that way the first time. But anyway, so yeah, look, hope it helps. Thumbs up the video and subscribe. And don't forget to get your hands dirty, see you for the next one.